Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're looking at menopause maintenance and fooling your pelvic floor. All right, happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> today, in our menopause maintenance segment, we're talking about fooling your pelvic floor. Yes? We want to trick our pelvic floor into action. And a lot of times, this is the only way to go. Because I'm sorry, right? How many times, you know, the doctor tells you to do your kegels, so you do them sitting up or standing up, and there's no activation there, right? Maybe if we squeeze our butt or, or grip our quadriceps, but especially when you're in menopause and you're losing strength really through every muscle in your body, not just your pelvic floor, it's really, really hard to find that sense of activation and activity inside your pelvis. So what can we do? Well, we're just gonna turn it upside down, right? So here we have the half Cadillac, we have the long yellow springs, and we have the sling here. And we have a very young menopausal woman, Miss Casey. She's, she's not in menopause, but she's my model. She's acting like she is. So today, she's going to show you how to get into the sling. So that sling goes right into the front of the hips. And I really love this position, just you know, hands down for a lot of pelvic floor work um, on the forearms and on the knees, or the hands and the knees, especially the forearms and the knees. And then, you get the added bonus of this sling and the springs. Wow, this is just, like, we, we are brought into the world of contrast and opposition like that. So you can really teach a client, especially, you know, I'm in menopause, so I can talk to you about it. Fuzzy brain, we're, like, it's hard to concentrate on stuff. So these springs, when you're cueing your menopausal client, you got to find contrast, you got to find opposition. Well, sometimes it's hard for them to just find it on their own, so these springs just bring them right into that. So from here, because of that opposition and this full length in her spine, she can stay with this full back body and just start to take some deep inhales and exhales. And I want to ask her to keep her bones in place as she inhales and exhales. So this wide position of her sitting bones pelvis, right, her whole inferior pelvis here is blooming, that is creating a contrast to the contracting muscles of the pelvic floor. So with this wide pelvis, she's going to be able to notice and become aware of that, that activity in her pelvis in a much better way than if she's sitting or if she's standing and the sitting bones are narrow. So this is really giving her much more sensation inside her pelvis. Now there's many things you can do, but we can add on a nice little um, sad puppy dog tail. Yep, and happy puppy dog tail. And from here I'm going to change the breath. So she can exhale to curl. Good. And then on the inhale, she's going to flip her tail up, but I still want her to keep that activity and that work inside her pelvis. And exhale and curl. And inhale and that activity and that spreading apart of her sitting bones without letting me see her, her dumping or cinching into her lumbar spine. I don't want to see that. So Casey, show them the wrong position for this. Yes. So this is what you'll see a lot of people doing. So this is a total spill, a collapse, a buckling. We're not treating the body like a tensegrity system here. And then when she activates, when she starts to pull all those bones apart, it's not just translating into arm work or upper back work or belly work. This is also translating into finding more balance and tensegrity and pulling apart and activation in the pelvis. That's it for today. If you have a question or observation that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning.